Welcome back everyone. I'm Lance Earl. Today I'm going to be talking about probably the most important question we can ask ourselves. The most important thing that we must know if we are to be acceptable to God. And that is, who is God? What is the nature of God? Do we know who he is, what he is, what he expects of us? Because if we don't know God or if we know a, a false God, then we really know nothing at all. And so I want to spend a few minutes and share a brief discussion that might be appropriate when speaking with members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons, about who they believe God is. The objective here is to show that the God of Mormonism is in constant flux and that the God of the of Mormonism in the original, when the church was first started, is nothing at all like the God they claim to follow now. And the God they claim to follow now is not a bit like the Jesus of the Bible. So let's, let's jump in. <clears throat> this discussion can be found in our PDF file, uh, Ask Your Bishop, which can be found at askyourbishop.com. And the title is Nature of God, A Changing View, 1820 to 1832. And so I'm going to present short questions that you can ask your Latter-day Saint friends, family members, and then some points that you can use to answer those questions. Question number one is, since the first vision of 1820 up to 1832, did Joseph Smith believe Heavenly Father and Jesus were individual members of the Godhead, or did he see them as one being? Let's start there. The first edition of the Book of Mormon uh, has 1 Nephi chapter 11, verse 20, and it says this, I looked and beheld a virgin again bearing a child in her arms. And the angel said to me, Behold, the Lamb of God, yea, even the Eternal Father. Now, I want you to dig in and focus on the last line. Behold, the Lamb of God, even the Eternal Father. Now, the virgin that this is talking about is Mary. The, the baby that she carried in her arms is the baby Jesus. And this is reported to be a vision that the Mormon prophet Nephi had. So again, the key point is this, behold the Lamb of God, yea, even the Eternal Father. Now, that was in the 1830 edition of the Book of Mormon. In, in 1937, another edition was brought out. Well, actually, I, I believe there were editions prior to 1937, but the 1937 edition says this, And I looked and beheld the virgin, again bearing a child in her arms. And the angel said to me, Behold the Lamb of God, yea, even the Son of the Eternal Father. And so the differences we have is in 1830, it was the Lamb of God, yea, even the Eternal Father. The Lamb of God and the Eternal Father are one and the same. Behold the Lamb of God, yea, even the Eternal Father. And then later, Joseph Smith's view changed of Jesus Christ. And now it says, Behold the Lamb of God, yea, even the Son of the Eternal Father. So God went from being the Father and Jesus, all tied into one being, to being two separate beings, the Father and Jesus Christ. Next question. Joseph Smith recorded, I completed the translation and review of the New Testament on the 2nd of February, 1833, and sealed it up, no more to be opened until it arrived in Zion. This is found in History of the Church, volume 23, page 324. And so my question to you is this, up until this date, did Joseph Smith believe Heavenly Father and Jesus to be one being, one and the same, and a single member of the Godhead? Well, let's have a look. He retranslated the Bible, made his own version. They call it the Joseph Smith version or the inspired version. And this is what Luke 10, 22 says. 
First, I'm going to start with the King James Version. It says, all things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. So let's focus again on the key parts. It says that no man knows who the Son is but the Father. So only the Father knows who the Son is, and who the Father is but the Son. So Joseph Smith translated this, changed it to fit his view of God. This is Luke 10, 22 in the Joseph Smith translation. It says, all things are delivered to me of my father and no man knoweth that the son is the father and the father is the son, but him to, ha- to whom the son will reveal it. So we see two very different things. In the King James and in all of our Bibles today, it says that no man really knows who the Father is except Jesus, and no man really knows who Jesus is except the Father, right? And and the, the only other people that can comprehend this are those that God reveals it to. But now we go to Joseph Smith and he says, no man knows that the Son is the Father, and the Father is the Son. So here we have a complete change of meaning, but it becomes very clear that he doesn't see the Father and the Son as two separate beings. He sees them as one being, one person. They are the same. Considering the writings of Joseph Smith from 1820 until 1832, it's not surprising at all that Jesus Christ alone appeared to him in the first vision account that he wrote in 1832. Now, I I wanna be very clear about this. There are multiple accounts of Joseph Smith's first vision. The first one was written in his own hand, and you can actually view the original or, or photocopies of the original. They are available in many places, including the Joseph Smith papers put out by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This is Joseph's record written in his own hand. And we can view that and see what he says. And this is the story he tells about his first vision. This is the first time he told the story, the first time that he recorded it. He said, And the Lord heard my cry in the wilderness, and while in the attitude of calling upon the Lord, in the sixteenth year of my age, a pillar of light above the brightness of the sun at noonday came down from above and rested upon me. I was filled with the Spirit of God, and the Lord opened the heavens to me, and I saw the Lord. Okay, I want to be very clear about what he just said. First of all, he said he was 16. Well, the official record says he was 14. But secondly, and more importantly, it says that this pillar of light came down and rested on him, and he was filled with the Spirit. And when he looked up, he saw only the Lord Jesus Christ, only the Lord. Now the official version is quite different from that, but this is the first time he wrote it down. He saw only the Lord. So it's not surprising, again, considering the way he wrote the Book of Mormon, that the Father is the Son, the way that he rewrote the Bible, that the Son is the Father and the Father is the Son. It's not surprising at all that he only saw one being in that pillar of light during his first telling of the first vision. Now, next I want to turn our attention to the lectures on faith. The lectures on faith were incorporated into the Doctrine and Covenants, and they were there from uh, 1835 until 1921, at which time the church removed that canon of Scripture from the Doctrine and Covenants. And this is what Lecture on Faith, uh, number five, says. It says there are two personages who constitute the great matchless governing and supreme power over all things, by whom all things were created and made, that are created and made, whether invisible or visible, whether in heaven or on earth, or in, in the earth or under the earth, or throughout the immensity of space, They are the Father and the Son. The Father being a personage of spirit, 
glory and power, possessing all possession and fullness, or excuse me, possessing all perfection and fullness, the Son, who was in the bosom of the Father, a personage of tabernacle, made or fashioned like unto a man, or being in the form and likeness of man, or rather, man was formed after his likeness and in his image. So here we see the lecture on faith saying that the Godhead is made of two beings. You see, that's a change because everything prior to that said one being, that whether it be the Father or the Son, they are one and the same. Now we have two, the Father and the Son. The Father having a body of spirit, it says, the Son having a body of tabernacle after the manner of man, so he would look like us. And so we see a definite change in the Mormon perception of who God is. And the thing that's amazing now is if we go to the current version of the, uh, the first vision story, it says that the pillar of light came down and that there were two beings, the Father and the Son. Both had bodies of flesh. So you can see that, that the picture, the understanding, the story of who God is in Mormonism is ever in flux and ever changing. And so my question to you is this. Are you ready? Are you interested in knowing the unchangeable God? You see, Hebrews 13, 8 tells us that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, that he does not change. He does not morph. He does not become something new. God is God. Now, if we are to be found acceptable to God, if we are to be reconciled with God so that we can receive eternal life, we must know who God is. Are you ready now to know the one and only true God? Because I'm anxious to share with you what I have learned about him. I'm Lance Earl, and I'll see you soon.